Hello everyone, I'm David Egiri from Columbia University. I'm going to talk about the seamless integration of third-party components with ESP, our open source platform for system on chip design. In particular, to demonstrate the new integration capabilities of ESP, I will talk about the integration of the RISC V Ariane processor core from ETH Zurich and the Deep Learning Accelerator from NVIDIA. Before starting, I'd like to thank my co-authors, Juan Lin, Paolo, Guy and Luca from Columbia University and Nandini from IBM Research. Modern SOCs contain a growing number of accelerators, which make the system more and more heterogeneous. As the complexity of the SOC design effort keeps increasing, the addition of new capabilities is increasingly limited by the engineering effort. Reusing pre-existing hardware components is critical to reduce the engineering effort and to keep the design of complex SOCs practically feasible. Mainly thanks to the open source hardware movement and to the RISC-V project, a growing community of researchers and engineers is contributing to the proliferation of open source hardware processor cores and accelerators. These intellectual property components allow designers to exploit the aggregate expertise of the entire community when building a new SOC. However, combining together a large amount of different third-party IPs to compose an SOC remains a very challenging task, and therefore the capability of seamlessly integrating third-party components into an SOC architecture is key to designing complex SOCs. For this reason, we added to ESP the support for the integration of third-party accelerators. ESP is our open source platform for the design of heterogeneous SOC architectures. ESP provides a set of different flows to facilitate the design of new accelerators and to automate their SOC integration. The new third-party IP flow that we present today allows the SOC designer to integrate existing accelerators from the open source hardware community. The figure highlights the differences between integrating an ESP accelerator and integrating a third-party accelerator. On the software side, ESP provides a user API and device drivers to manage the accelerator. The integration of a third-party accelerator instead is such that an ESP instance can drive a third-party accelerator by simply running its original software and device drivers. On the hardware side, the ESP accelerators are plugged into an ESP accelerator socket, which completely decouples the accelerator from the rest of the system. By adding adapters for standard bus protocols in the socket, all third-party accelerators with an interface compliant to one of the supported bus standards can be plugged in as well. We demonstrate these new capabilities by integrating the Ariane RISC 5 core and multiple in instances of the NVIDIA um, Deep Learning Accelerator into an SOC instance, which we implement on an FPGA board by means of the ESP push button flow for rapid prototyping. The contributions of this work are already available as part of the ESP release. A hands-on tutorial on the ESP website teaches how to use this new flow in practice. Designers can use the new third-party accelerator flow alongside the other ESP accelerator design flows to rapidly prototype RISC-V based SOCs that combine a mix of their own accelerators with other open source hardware components. ESP combines a scalable architecture with a flexible methodology. The ESP architecture is structured as a tile grid. There are four main types of tiles, processor tiles, memory tiles for the communication with main memory, accelerator tiles, and third-party accelerator tiles. In addition, there is an auxiliary tile, like the yellow one, for peripherals like UART or Ethernet, or for system utilities like the interrupt controller. Each tile is encapsulated into a modular socket that interfaces it to a network on chip, which has a 2D mesh topology with multiple physical planes. For example, 
a typical a typical knob configuration um, for ESP would be three bidirectional planes for cache coherence, two for DMA messages, and one for interrupts and for memory mapped IO messages. This picture already includes the most recent contributions that we have made available with this work. The option to have the Ariane core in the processor tiles and the third party accelerator tile. The ESP flexible methodology embraces the use of a variety of design flows for component development. In particular, these flows simplify the design of new loosely coupled accelerators and their integration into the architecture. Users can choose to specify a new accelerator at different abstraction levels, including cycle accurate RTL descriptions with system Verilog or Chisel, loosely timed or untimed behavioral descriptions with system C or C++, and languages such as uh, Keras TensorFlow, PyTorch, or Onyx for the deep learning domain. All the accelerators generated with the ESP design flows become part of an IP library, which now can also contain third-party IPs like NVDLA and Ariane. The designer can then use the ESP graphical user interface to select the number, mix and placement of tiles for a target SOC, as well as many other configuration parameters. Once the floor planning is specified, the flow for FPGA prototyping is push button. ESP generates the RTL for the full system, which can then be deployed on FPGA where it can run Linux. The ESP graphical user interface guides the developers through an interactive SOC design flow that allows them to choose the sites of the tile matrix and therefore of the corresponding uh, NOC configuration, choose the mix of components in the tiles, select the desired implementation for each accelerator, select the desired process or core, determine the cache hierarchy configuration, select the clock domain of each tile, and enable the desired system monitors. Once this configuration phase is completed, the designers can rely on the SOC flow for FPGA prototyping. Let's dive now into the new contribution for third-party IP integration in ESP. Here, side by side, we have the tile for accelerators designed with ESP on the left, and the tile for third-party accelerators on the right. Each accelerator tile hosts a loosely coupled accelerator that executes coarse grain tasks. Let's focus, on, let's focus on the left first. At design time, the modular socket in gray decouples the design of the accelerator from the design of the rest of the SOC. The socket is automatically generated and it can host any accelerator compliant to a simple load store interface. The socket provides a set of platform services such as accelerator configuration through memory mapped registers, address translation, direct memory access and interrupt management. Moreover, the socket also has support for things like multiple cache coherence models, accelerator to accelerator communication, dynamic voltage frequency scaling, and performance monitors. By placing all these services in the automatically generated socket, ESP highly simplifies the accelerator design. However, a third-party accelerator often comes with some of these services already embedded in its implementation. When that's the case, it doesn't need them in the socket. So in those cases, the modularity of the ESP sockets allows the SOC architect to simply drop the unneeded services. For example, on the right, you can see that the third-party accelerator loses some of the socket services, but it still retains many of them, such as the interrupt management or the runtime reconfigurability of the cache coherence. To integrate the NVDLA accelerator, we also had to upgrade the interrupt module in the socket to support accelerators with both edge sensitive and level sensitive interrupt requests. At the interface, a third party accelerator normally has a master bus interface for memory access and a slave bus interface for being configured 
and finally also a done signal to notify the CPU when the assigned task has been completed. For the new third-party IP flow of ESP, we implemented adapters for ARM-based bus protocols. Specifically, AXI, AXI Lite and APB adapters are now part of the open source release of ESP. We anticipate implementing adapters for other standards in the near future, and in that way we will expand the set of third-party IP blocks that ESP can integrate. I will now show an abstraction of the main steps of the ESP accelerator design flow. The first step is to run an interactive script that generates a fully working skeleton of the accelerator, as well as its device driver and various test applications, a test bench, a bare metal application, and a Linux user space application. This step largely simplifies the manual effort of the designers. Then, in the next step, the designer needs to fill in the computation part of the accelerator, as well as the data preparation and data validation functions in the test applications. At this point, the accelerator and all the test applications are ready. All the next, the next steps are about testing and optimizing. And finally, the accelerator becomes part of the IP library and it can be instantiated in an SOC with the ESP GUI. On the right instead, we have the main steps needed to integrate a third-party accelerator in practice. First, list all source files, hardware and software, then fill in a simple make file with the required make targets for RTL generation or software compilation, then fill in a short XML file with some key information like a unique accelerator name and ID, the name of uh, reset and clock signals and some information on the bus protocol of choice. And finally, write a simple very low top level wrapper to wire together the accelerator with the ESP socket. After these simple steps, ESP sees the third party accelerator just like any other ESP accelerator. The accelerator can then be selected from the ESP GUI and nothing changes in the SOC design flow all the way down to FPGA prototyping. With this new third-party IP flow, we integrated the NVDLA. We also integrated the Ariane core in the processor tile of ESP. Some of the decoupling and socket concepts that we discussed for the accelerator tile are valid also for the integration of a new processor core in the processor tile. We integrated the 64-bit RISC-5 Ariane processor core from ETH Zurich in the ESP processor tile. Now, at design time, ESP users can choose between a 32-bit Spark V8 Leon 3 processor core from Cobham Geisler and Ariane. If Ariane is selected, the resulting system can execute any RISC-V program as is, with no ESP-specific patches. This includes Linux, the bootloader of Ariane, and third-party device drivers such as the NVDLA runtime. The ESP processor tile follows the same flexibility and decoupling principles of the accelerator tile. The socket contains adapters for standard ARM bus protocols, as well as some other services like the ESP Level 2 Private Cache, which implements a directory-based MESI protocol. Since each processor comes with a custom implementation of a couple of components like the interrupt controller, integrating different third-party processor cores cannot be automated. Nevertheless, other than those components, the integration is greatly facilitated by the flexibility of ESP. Therefore, we envision to support more processor cores in the near future. NVDLA is a deep learning accelerator from NVIDIA. It's open source, fixed function, and highly configurable. Although NVDLA is highly configurable, the NVDLA compiler only supports two main configurations, the NVDLA full and the NVDLA small. To test and evaluate the integration of NVDLA in ESP, we use the NVDLA small, which has 8-bit integer precision, 64 multiply and accumulate units, 128 kilobytes of local memory and a 64-bit AXI interface. The NVDLA compiler takes as input the network topology in Proto.txt format, 
a trained CAFE model and a calibration table, which is needed for adjusting the network model that was trained in full precision to work with reduced precision. The NVDLA compiler produces an NVDLA loadable containing all the information layer by layer to configure and invoke NVDLA. The NVDLA runtime leverages the user mode driver to load the inputs, load the NVDLA loadable, and to submit inference jobs to the kernel mode driver, that is a Linux device driver. Once integrated in ESP, an accelerator can be selected from the GUI and instantiated in multiple tiles. We demonstrate the flexibility and the integration capabilities of ESP by generating various SOC architectures that include one processor tile with the Ariane core and different numbers of memory tiles and third-party accelerator tiles containing NVDLA. The screenshot shows an SOC configuration in the ESP GUI with four NVDLA instances and four memory channels. We deployed each SOC on a Xilinx Ultrascale FPGA with a clock frequency of 50 MHz. The user mode driver and the kernel mode driver of NVDLA run on Ariane, which offloads the inference jobs to the NVDLA instances as needed. When selecting multiple memory tiles in the GUI, ESP automatically partitions the memory hierarchy to leverage the increased off-chip communication bandwidth. Each memory tile contains a DDR4 interface to a distinct partition of the main memory. The table on the right shows the specifications of the four neural networks for image classification that we used for the evaluation. They represent a good range of network sizes, where the biggest network is ResNet50, with, with uh, 229 layers and a 98 megabytes model. First, we ran inference jobs with an SOC with a single NVDLA instance for all four networks. In this graph, we report an average number of frames per second with the system running at 50 MHz on FPGA. The performance depends on the network size varying between 0.4 frames per second for ResNet50 and 4.5 frames per second for ComNet. Clearly, the performance is limited by the fact that we're running at just 50 MHz and that we're using the small version of NVDLA. NVIDIA reported the frames per second for ResNet50 for an ASIC implementation of, of the NVDLA small running at a clock frequency of 1 GHz. The comparison with our results indicates a slowdown of 18x, which is aligned to the 20x gap in clock frequency between this ASIC and our FPGA implementation. The classification performance can be improved by parallelizing the execution of batches of images across multiple instances of NVDLA. With ESP, it is easy to explore the design space of possible SOC configurations by tuning the number of NVDLA instances and the number of memory channels utilized in parallel. Since the user mode and kernel mode drivers provided with NVDLA currently work only with a single NVDLA device, we patch them to enable the simultaneous invocation of multiple NVDLA instances from the Ariane core. The graph on the right shows the results for four SOC configurations each with an increasing number of NVDLA instances and memory channels utilized in parallel. These results are for the LENET network processing the MNIST dataset. The task parallelization delivers an approximately linear increase in performance and confirms the scalability properties of the ESP architecture. For instance, an SOC configuration with four NVDLA instances and four memory channels delivers a 4x speedup for the LENET network. Here are some pointers in case you want to find out more about ESP. As I mentioned, the contributions presented in this talk are already part of the release and the ESP website includes a new hands-on tutorial dedicated to this work. Of course, do not hesitate to contact us if you have any questions and thank you very much for your attention.